Yo, 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 it's your girl, Andrew Antonio here, and today is zero days left until the competition. Why? Because there isn't going to be a competition. I'll explain. The competition that I was training for turned out only be open for university students. I'm not gonna lie, like it was kind of demotivating when they put up the application. It was like, yeah, it's only for the university students at the university. I was like, excuse me. So I did indulge a little bit, had some alcohol, some late nights, you know, chilling with friends, not eating that great. And I'm gonna be doing a little bit something different with my gym vlogs. I'm gonna be going more in depth into like free exercises. So like one on a back day, one on a leg day, and then one on a chest day. So to kickstart everything, I thought I'll talk about pull-ups, jumping squats, and dips. I'm just gonna finish my warm up, and then we're gonna jump straight into how to get your first pull-up, as well as do a pull-up with proper form. All right, cool, let's get straight into it. I do advise you to get some chalk, and this just basically helps with grip. My hands get super duper sweaty when I work out, so without this, I would just be slipping off the bar constantly. You can get it in liquid form, which I prefer, but you can also get it in powdered form. The powder form is more like for rock climbing. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Oh, <laughs> rock climbing. And you have to keep re-dipping your hands into the chalk, whereas liquid chalk, a whole load goes into your hands straight away, dries up, it's basically stuck to your skin forever. So we're gonna go in with scapular pulls first. You wanna keep your arms dead straight and you basically wanna shrug. You wanna stretch your arms as you possibly can do and then pull down, but you're just pulling your upper back. And this is where you're gonna be hanging and you just wanna do this little movement whilst keeping your arms nice and straight. And you basically wanna go for 10 reps. By the way, the session we're gonna be doing today is now up on screen. <laughs> As you can see, you're stretching, then pull to the top. Stretch your scapula, pull. Stretch your scapula, pull. If you're trying to get your first pull-ups, then you need to invest in resistant bands, okay? Forget about that assistive pull-up machine that you see in all the gyms. This, this will be your better option. The thicker the resistance band, the easier it will be to lift yourself. So I would advise if you're a complete beginner to get thick resistance bands. And then you just need to work your way down over the months. You basically want to feed it through and you want to put it in the middle of the bar. Don't put it offside or anything. You want to go like smack bam in the middle. So pull-ups, you want to be shoulder width apart as well as the chin up shoulder width apart, okay? Watch yourself off of the box, hang for a second. You're going to be wobbling everywhere and that's okay. And all you want to do is get your chin above the bar and straight back down. Fully extend your arms. That is the biggest tip I could give you. I would aim for about 10 reps, four sets on the thick resistance band and just keep on doing the thick resistance bands until you get to the medium resistance band. Now, as soon as you get to the medium resistance band, you can potentially start to add some negatives into your workout. So the negative is basically you're jumping to the top of the movement, get your chin above the bar and lowering slowly. Now, when you go to do this for the first time ever, you're going to drop like crazy. Like you will feel like you're not doing anything, but I promise you that you are. So do about like four to five of those and build up to 10 basically. <laughs> you should take a protein shot every time I say basically. All right, cool. So you basically want to jump all the way up and then you just want to slowly lower yourself down. That's basically how you do a negative. All right, cool. Time to get proper into my session. Now, I have decided to completely get rid of chin-ups and move strictly onto pull-ups. Why? Because the majority of the competitions around the world for women, as well as beginners, are pull-ups. For the minute of pull-ups, I managed to get 15 in total, which isn't too bad considering this is the first time I ever did pull-ups instead of chin-ups. You never stop working on the basics, you just make them harder. So I've added five kilograms to a negative pull-ups. And another tip to getting your first pull-up or improving them is holding them for a few seconds at the top before releasing. Right now we're gonna be talking about what the hell your legs do during a pull-up or chin-up. Ideally, you want your legs to be stuck together, dead straight, core engaged the whole time. So looking a little bit something like this. But that is not how your first one's gonna look. Your first one ever, use your legs. Use those legs, I'm telling you. Do a little running man, do a little, like, a little kick up. Just, you just need to get your first pull up out of the way. So it's probably gonna look a little bit something like this. And that is okay. But that's exactly what mine looks like. And probably what everyone else's looks like. I then completed the session with TRX rows, single arm dumbbell rows, 
sing along bicycles, cable machine drop set bicycles, and some handstand training, which I now do every other day as my mission is to hold a handstand longer than two seconds. The next morning. Good morning, I have my coffee. It's currently 6.57. This is the first time I've actually used my voice, so <clears throat> I've never done a workout this early before. That's a lie. I used to do workout at this time, even earlier actually, before I had a child. I co-parent, so this weekend I do not have her. And I'm in a little bit of a rush today, so if we need to get dressed now, get to the gym, do a banging leg session where I'm going to talk you through how to do a jumping squat properly and what qualifies for a competition. All oh, my legs are going to be in bits but luckily we're in a rush because we've got to get to my osteopath appointment which is at 11 o'clock and then I need to go to the garage yeah to hand in my car for an MIT and let me tell you let me tell you <laughs> my dad gave me his old car for the time being because my car actually broke down and my dad's old car is an O2 play do I even need to say anymore? All right, cool, let's just get changed and head to the gym. Cheers. Alrighty, I made it to the gym in one piece. For a competition, you just need to go below your knees. What I mean by that, you don't need to be doing a deep squat. You just need to go and that is it. You don't need to go ass to grass or anything. It's just not necessary in a competition. You'll be putting yourself, what's that thing called? at a disadvantage <laughs> from here to here more than enough making sure as well you keep your chest upright on the way down and when it comes to the jump you do not need to explode a little two centimeter jump on the floor for a competition will do so you just want your jumping squats to be like very minimal. Another thing you want to focus on as well is making sure that you lock your legs out and back in so that you can get more power that way rather than keeping your legs bent the whole time. So what I mean, you want to drive like this every time rather than it being a... Right, cool, let's get into a minute of jumping squats. I've not done these in a little while. In total, I managed to get 39 jumping squats, which I'm not proud of, as my quads just kept getting so tight too fast, so I will work my way back up to 70 jumping squats very fast. I then moved on to deadlifts with a slight pause at the bottom. I'm sorry, I don't have my mic in right now, but I'm actually so proud of myself. I deadlifted 80 kilograms for eight, no, sorry, for six clean reps. I remember when I couldn't even do like one rep on 80 kilograms and it was a sumo deadlift. <laughs> and for someone who has lumbar scoliosis as well, and I always used to be so scared doing deadlifts, just taking the time to do the form correctly and go up slowly, it makes a difference for sure. But yeah, I'm so proud of myself before I just slide that in there. <laughs> I then moved on to cast glute bridges, drop set on the leg extension, as well as on the leg curl machine and the abductor machine. Yep, free drop set on three different exercises. Fun. One hour later. All right, relax that. Okay, so definitely can see that the shoulder needs a little bit of love today. And because of your back, we know that with your scoliosis, there's more of a rotation with the right ribs coming back towards me, left ribs coming forward. There's always a little bit more compression coming into your lower pelvis. Does it look bad today? No, it really doesn't. It's just noticeable. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is just try and sort of put a bit of pressure into your ribs to start off with and see what we can do to offload your shoulders. So let's go face up first. I cannot stress the importance of visiting a osteopath, chiropractor, sports massage therapist, whatever you prefer, at least once a month. Stretching alone isn't always enough, so if you take any tips from today, then please take this one. To take care of your body at least once a month and spend that 60 pounds or whatever, however much it is, just to get your body like tweaked. Early the next morning. I was just on my way to the gym and my dad's car has broken down. <laughs> It didn't pass the MOT yesterday, by the way, because we had to take it to the garage to actually get it fixed on Monday, but it has not survived till Monday. So um, I'm currently <laughs> in the middle of the road. And before you come at me and be like, oh, why don't you just push the car to the side? The clutch has like gone, like gone. I can't move. The handbrake isn't even going up completely. So I'm just stuck here.
it is a luxury to have a car. It really is. Never ever take transport for granted. I'm gonna run to the gym with my bag and uh, my tripod. Wish me luck. Alrighty, I made it to the gym. For this session, as I said, we're gonna be talking about dips. When you talk about the top half size, it's like really super duper busy in the gym right now. I can't film my whole whole body, but I'm gonna do my best to show you the top half first, and then I'm gonna show you where your feet placement, placement, placement should be. You don't wanna be like down like this, you wanna make sure you're up at the top, so you're like shrugging downwards. And then if you wanna just practice holding that for a little bit. And then when you go down, you basically wanna hinge at the elbow, move forward like so. You really wanna lean forward basically, and you wanna make it on that 90 degree. You can go even lower, but that's like full full range of motion, unnecessary for competition. You only need to go to 90 degrees when you go into a competition, okay? And then back up basically, and make sure to fully lock out. As you can see, my triceps pop, and you're keeping your elbows tucked in. You don't want to flare your elbows. So when you go back, make sure it goes backwards behind you rather than flaring outwards. Alrighty, I know you can only see my bottom half, but it is what it is. When I used to do my dips, or when you first start doing them, you are gonna bend your legs probably and let your body go like at an angle. Correct form is to actually keep your feet under your hips slightly in front of you, like so. I hope I've simplified that part for you and it makes sense. If it doesn't, then comment below and like, I'll do another video explaining it because I feel like I can't fully explain it right now because the gym is super, super busy and I should just get on with my workout. So to start off, I'll be doing this workout if you want to follow along. A minute of dip, I'm not too sure how I'm going to do today, but I'm going to give it my best shot. In total for my dips, I managed to get 31, which ain't too bad, ain't too bad, but we got to get right back up in today's 40s again. I then went into pike push-ups, some handstand training, barbell shoulder press, pull-ups, tricep extensions, and lower and side back extensions for the lower back. Remember to comment below and like this video. If you want to follow along my journey, then you need to subscribe.